Hello and welcome to a new MeshMorph tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to set up alpha token naming conventions on Maya's 2020 Stingray PBS materials. Alpha tokens are a simple solution to health conversion of transparent materials between FBX, GLTF, GLB, and USDZ formats. Before we start, we want to give a shout out to our friends at cc0textures.com. All textures in today's video are freely available at cc0textures.com. Now, without further ado, let's begin. As a rule of thumb, the first step in the process is to correctly set up the scene's working units. For Maya 2020, the working units can be set from the preference panel. When objects are displayed in augmented reality, proportions are read in meters corresponding to the real scale of objects in world space. Now, with our units correctly set up, let's build a few simple models to apply new Stingray PBS materials to. First, we build a simple base from a primitive cube. To appreciate a more realistic look in augmented reality, edges may be softened. In this case, we are smoothing the edges of this cube by inserting a few extra loops close to the edges, and a smooth modifier with a subdivision level of 4. Then, we apply uniform automatic UV mapping to the model, so our materials are set with the appropriate UV coordinates. Once the base is done, let's create our material. Using Maya's Hypershade panel, let's add a new Stingray PBS material into the navigator, and set the underscore opaque as the token suffix of the material's name. Then, let's activate all the texture channels for this material for further setup. Next. Let's set the material's base color as white. Now, let's bring some textures into their corresponding channels. A few notes. First, opaque token is always optional since all materials without tokens fall back as opaque type during conversion. Nevertheless, we recommend to set the token opaque in all non-transparent materials in favor of consistency in naming conventions. And second, Setting 100% white as the base color of the material ensures that all shades are displayed one-to-one -one from the pixels in the color texture. Once all textures have been properly loaded in their respective channels, our base model is done. Let's copy our model three more times so we can have a base for each available token. Next, let's create an empty shell from a sphere primitive by removing one half of its structure. This way, we will be able to visualize how the double-sided token works when applied on a single-sided mesh object. Again, let's copy this object three more times so we have enough shells for all available tokens. Once this is done, let's create another opaque material for our first shell. Same as before, make sure to set the material's base color as white and proceed with loading all texture channels. Similar to the material of our base, this new material is fully opaque with a fair amount of bump metalness and rogueness. Next, the blend token. For this material, we will change a couple of extra things in the material's properties. First, we set the token as underscore blend in the material's name suffix for transparency. Also, we must set the preset material type to preset standard transparent. This ensures alpha transparency is read from the alpha in the color texture. Again, we enable the needed texture channels and set up color base to white, and proceed to load all corresponding textures. Let's apply the material to the second shell, and as you can see, some areas of the object are partially transparent. Taking a look at the texture source, the transparency is read directly from the absence of pixels in the PNG file. Moving on, the mask token. Similar to the blend material, mask and blend in terms of setup are mostly the same. The only variant is in the material's preset type. 
In this case, we must set it up to the standard mask preset. Let's set the name of this material with an underscore mask prefix. Once all textures are loaded into their corresponding channels, let's apply this material to a shell. In this instance, transparency is taken from the alpha channel of the color texture, but in a binary way. The absence of color or any percentage of transparency below one is read as fully transparent, and the existence of color or non-transparency is read as fully opaque. Again, let's take a quick look at the texture source. And finally, the double-sided token. In this tutorial, we're going to use it as an additive token to the mask token. Let's create another Stingray PBS material, and let's set its name with underscore mask and underscore double-sided as prefix. Although this token is not related to opacity, it is available as an additive token since it can be mixed with all other tokens. Then, let's set this material up with the same parameters as the mask material previously created. To speed up the process, let's connect the same textures from the mask material into this new material using the Hyper Shades Navigator. Once done, let's apply the material to our last shell. Now that we are done, Let's double check all our materials names before exporting the model. Opaque, Blend, Mask, and Mask double sided. Then select all the meshes for FBX export. Go to the file menu and choose export selected. In the export panel, let's choose FBX as format. Most animation types are supported. It is recommended to bake all animation keyframes before exporting. Let's check that neither lights nor cameras are included in the exported file. If the model includes textures, it is very important to check on the Embed Media checkbox. This packages all meshes and textures as a single FBX file. Leave units as automatic, set up an output file name and location, and proceed to export the model. Once at MeshMorph, we are choosing to convert and publish this model as a gallery item. Go to the Conversion Hub and select FBX to USDZ. Set conversion terms as non-free to avoid watermarking, and let's proceed to upload our exported model into the system. Select Yes in the Replace Alpha Tokens drop-down a list of alpha tokens with descriptions, including access to this tutorial, is available by clicking the More Info button. Next, in Normalized Textures, we can set this to No, since all our textures are 512 pixels in size. Set it to Yes if you need texture optimization done automatically during conversion. And finally, let's set our metadata for publishing on my private gallery. We'll add a description after the model is converted and published. We'll set it as private, so only this account has access to this gallery item. Now, let's submit. After a few seconds of processing, the model is ready for visualization. As you can see, all materials are displaying correctly, and all transparent and double-sided settings are working properly. Although, lighting seems a bit different, but that is due to the variation of light conditions between mediums. Nevertheless, all transparency channels show with great quality and accuracy as well as the double-sided feature. Now, on device and in augmented reality, we can see that all material properties stay consistent as well. One thing to notice is that in Maya, metalness and rockness appear a bit more exaggerated. This is due to the difference between Maya's cube map and augmented reality's real-time cube map render from the phone's camera. For the source materials of today's video and the list of available tokens and descriptions, please visit the tutorial section at meshmore.com.
and look for the topic on how to convert FBX to USDC with Alpha using material tokens. This concludes our today's tutorial. Thank you again for being an important part of the Meshmore family and please keep enjoying this amazing product. We'll see you next time.